passages throughout the book of Psalms, uh, looking at uh, these diary or journal entries in David's diary. Um, one of the things that is consistent throughout, as we've discussed in every single message, is David has a tremendous priority in his life, and that is the presence of God. No matter how much scandal David was in, no matter how great a victory, no matter what challenge he was facing, what was most important to David was the presence of God. You see, David saw the presence of God truly as the source of his strength. In fact, in fact, David once told God, you can take the kingdom and all of these resources, take all of the power, take all of the authority. Just don't take your presence because your presence has a way of doing something in my life that money can't buy. Your presence has a way of doing something in my life that my friends just don't have the power to do. Your presence has a way of getting me through some situations and circumstances that I just didn't believe it was possible to survive. But as a result of your presence, I'm still here today. And oftentimes we see David and we hear about David, we preach about David, we talk about David, and, and we celebrate his victories. But one of the principles that I love about David is he doesn't just want you to see him as the one who killed Goliath. He doesn't just want you to see him as the one who uh, killed the lion and the bear in the wilderness. He doesn't just want you to see him as the one when Saul killed his thousands, David killed his tens of thousands. He doesn't just want you to see him as king, but David wants you to see his rule real life, all of his ups and all of his downs. Not all of David's life was, was roses, but there were some tough moments, some moments where he was facing death. There were some tough moments when his children were acting a plum fool and he had no control over their behavior. That There were some moments when David made some mistakes that he never thought he would recover from. There were some moments where David thought actually for temporarily lost control of his entire kingdom. There were some moments where David has gotten himself in such a situation where he had to run for his life. And so when we look at the mountaintop moments of David, then we look at the valley moments of David. David concludes this entire collection of psalms with saying, no matter how high I get or no matter how low my life is, I got to give God some glory and that I have to praise God. In verse number one, he says, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. You got to really understand where David is coming from when he begins by saying, praise ye the Lord. The children of Israel have just been delivered out of exile. They had just been set free out of captivity. They have just been released and relieved from, from being in bondage, not as a result of what somebody else did, but because of their own disobedience. And the first thing that David says is praise God. Praise ye the Lord. David not only is saying to himself that he's going to praise, but David is actually giving instruction, helping us to see that the first thing we ought to do when God sets us free, the first thing we ought to do when God delivers us from something, no matter how tired we are, no matter how beat down we are, no matter how much we need to get some rest, David said your response to God's delivery in your life ought to be to give him some praise. How to be give God some praise. Let's deal with this word praise real briefly. Praise comes from a Hebrew word that means to speak well of. It means to celebrate. It means to honor God. It means to worship God. It means to reverence God. It means to use your mouth and the rhythmic movement of your vocal cords to audibly say, God, I thank you. God, I love you. God, you are awesome. God, you are great. It, it, it is to use your mouth to say hallelujah, praise the Lord, thank God, and guess what? It is irregardless to how you feel. It's irregardless to what recently just happened. David says no matter what you're going through, you ought to be in a position to give God some praise. 
And so I want to look at it because I think the Bible David will teach us is really the key to getting through all of this stuff and coming through on the other side is being able to say, open your mouth and give God some, some praise. It's to be able to give God some glory because when you praise God, you're acknowledging the power of God in the midst of your troubles. When you say, God, you're still great, even when it doesn't look like it. When you say, God, you're still awesome when you feel left out and forgotten. What you're saying is, God, I recognize that your power is bigger, larger, greater, grander than whatever it is that I'm going through. Not just passively waiting on what somebody else prays look like. Not just sitting and folding your arms because it doesn't take all of that. Not just saying that I'm conservative. The truth is we're not as conservative as sometimes we make ourselves out to be. Because if you hit that power ball after you play that number tomorrow, won't nobody be able to keep your mouth closed. You're going to run all over town letting everybody know what you've just won. But can I tell you, if your team won last night, my team didn't win and I was a little emotional, I was upset, Thankfully, well, prayerfully, I kept it under control because I wanted to fire the kicker for the, for the ECU, for the Pirates, because he missed two field goals. And I expressed an emotion of disappointment and anger and frustration because we could have won that game. We should have won that game. And no other game really mattered. I'm just trying to help you to understand that we are emotional beings. We are expressive beings. It's all about where we choose to be expressive. And the only challenge that I have with some church folks is the one place we want to be reserved, the one place we want to be calm, the one place that don't take all of that is in church. But the same emotional feeling, the same emotional capacity that we have to celebrate our favorite team, to celebrate victory on our job, to celebrate when we get a raise, to celebrate when we hit that power, but when we hit that number, the same excitement, it comes from the same place that we ought to be giving God glory. And we ought to be giving God praise because it tells not just God, because God doesn't need us to tell him who he is. Your praise is really for you. Your praise is really to help you to keep in perspective who's really in control, who's really in charge. I know the devil think he has me, but but the devil is a lie. God will not get has not gotten me here to leave me here. It's more of my life than what I'm going through, and I'm going to trust God and give him glory even in some of my darkest moments. And so David says, we got to praise the Lord. we got to praise the Lord. The first thing he gives us is four different points that he shares with us about praise. Is, is the, but number one, there is a, is a place that we ought to praise the Lord. So right here in the text in verse number one, he says, praise God in the sanctuary. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise God in his sanctuary. This is is really, really good because remember, David is is a poet by by nature. He's a songwriter, and so sometimes his writing is not as as literal as as we read it at times. Sometimes you got to do a little bit of homework to understand some of the metaphors and some of the meaning behind the words that he's choosing because he's crafty with his words, but but on the surface, you'll miss the, the, the depth of what he's saying if you just read it on the surface. Because on the surface, we hear the word sanctuary, and in our 21st century anachronistically application of the term sanctuary means that praise them at church. And that, that's an anachronistic approach to the text. Anachronistic simply means just means laying a 21st century uh, cultural perspective on a on a first century or old testament situation or event meaning sanctuary then does not mean the same as sanctuary today in fact sanctuary here really implies more than just a location in a building what david is trying to help you to understand that sanctuary here encompasses every place on earth where god is Because every place on earth is where God, sanctuary is the place where God dwells. And God, the earth and the world, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And we serve a God that is omnipresent. And so wherever you are, that's where God can be if you give him some praise. And so you can, Terrence, have a sanctuary in the building. That's why we partner with the YMCA. We didn't need a traditional church building to have a sanctuary. We have such a relationship with God 
God that we know if we give him the honor, give him the glory, stick with his word, we can have sanctuary anywhere. The Bible says where there's two or three gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. And so if you need God to show up in your life, find you two or three people that believe God at the level that you do, and y'all can have a sanctuary, and you can give God praise, because what happens when you praise God, God inhabits, Lord have mercy, the praises of his people. So if you need to feel God, if you need to sense God, because you got some weird stuff going on in your heart and in your mind, get to some people and create a sanctuary at home. Create a sanctuary at the job. Create a sanctuary outside. Wherever you are, David says, that's a good place to give God some glory. So the first place, the sanctuary represents the entire world here on earth. There's not a place that you can go where you can't give God some glory. If you're in prison, you can give God some glory. If you're in jail, you can give God some glory. If you're on house arrest, you can give God some glory. If you are stuck in a pandemic, you can give God some glory. If you're in a hospital, you can give God some glory. David said it doesn't matter where you are, you can give God some glory. You can praise the Lord. So first, he says, the, the place where you praise God is wherever you are. <laughs> Don't Stop waiting till you get to church to pray, give him some glory. Sometimes I think our, our worship services are not what they could be because we sometimes wait to get here to start giving God glory. And sometimes we wait till the sermon to give God some praise. Sometimes if they're not singing the song that we sing or the way that we want to sing and all of that, we wait to give God some glory. And here's something that I want to kind of stretch us with. Some of us, some people, not y'all, but some people need so much help and assistance before they can give God some praise that sometimes they never get around to it because they need a, an, an emotive, uh, um, almost like, ignite before they can give God praise. But David says, wherever you are, wherever you are, and our worship services can be that much better if we praise God even while we're at home. Praise God in the car on the way so that by the time we get here, we're all bursting at the seams and everybody's giving God glory. And not only can we cognitively know that God is here, but we can sense that God is here. So the second place that he says that we ought to praise God, and this is a big uh, term here, in the firmament of his power. Now, I know none of y'all know what firmament means. Amen. I didn't know what it means when I first studied this some time ago. I didn't know, so don't feel bad that you don't know what firmament means. That's part of my job to help this stuff become simple, right? And so that term firmament, a phrase firmament of his power, he first says that Praise God in a sanctuary that encompasses the entire earth realm. And so if that is the entire earth realm, the firmament means, the term firmament comes from a Hebrew word that means sphere, right? So you have, have the earth realm, and then you have the heavenly sphere. It, it, it is the, the uh, all of that that you see and don't see is the firmament. It is the atmosphere, right? And so so the, when he says praise him in the firmament, what David is, is, is speaking to is that, that not only is praise taking place here on earth, but praise is taking place in the heavens, in the firmament of his power, meaning that God is not just all powerful here on earth, but in every sphere Beyond this earthly realm or earth sphere, God has all of the power. And wherever he has power, there's praise going on. So there's not just praise going on here on earth, but what he's saying is there's praise going on in heaven. And what he's trying to help us to understand that there are angels who are surrounding the throne room of God who are doing nothing but singing holy, 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 and are giving God praise. So in essence, it's almost he's asking a rhetorical question by giving us this information and suggesting that if you have a challenge giving God praise here on earth, 
What do you think they're doing in heaven? Because you can't be in the presence of God in his heavenly sphere, in the firmament of his power, and not give God glory because they can see his majesty right there in front of them. And the only response that they have is to give God glory. And David said that the angels were many, were designed, they were created just to stand around there with them elders and give God glory. But you have a choice to look over your life and see what God has done, and you can give God some glory glory. It's all right to stand up and say, thank you, Jesus, for what you've done and give God some praise. Give God some praise. So there's a place that we ought to praise God. Not only is there a place that we ought to praise God, but David gives us some interesting points as to the reason that we ought to give God some praise. It's right here in the text. Verse number two, he says, praise him for his what? Lord have mercy. Should we praise him for his mighty acts? Praise him according to his what? Excellent greatness. Boy, this is so good. Because David is giving his testimony while he's giving some instruction. I could imagine David is telling them this. He's instructing the people of God this with a smile on his face. Or with a, I don't know, David might have, David was cute. He probably had a smile on his face. He probably had a smile on his face because David is reflecting on what God had just got done in their life. And, and, and because every time God got them out, they were already in a position where with, through their own strength and might, they couldn't get out on their own. <laughs> Terrence, they had been struggling in exile for years. Not that they didn't want to get out, not that they weren't trying to get out, but it didn't matter what they did, they couldn't get out. And, and when they were in a position where they didn't have the power to deliver themselves from, after when God got ready, he delivered them. And when he delivered them, he delivered them in a way where the only one who could get credit for their deliverance is God. Lord have mercy, this is good. Because what I found is that every now and again we can find ourselves in a situation where we struggle with cycles. Y'all know what cycles are? Cycles is, is, is a cycle is where something just keeps happening over and over and over again. You try to work your way out of it, and a year later you find yourself in the same situation over and over again. You try to break up with them, but, but, they, but they whispered those sweet nothings in your ear. And next year you were hurt over and over again. You've been trying to overcome, but for whatever reason, you were there over and over again. And it doesn't seem like no matter what you do, you just keep finding yourself in the same situation year after year, month after month, day after day. And then one day God shows up and you don't struggle with the same thing that you were struggling with. God shows up and that phone call comes that you don't know where it came from. God shows up and he sends somebody into your life to bless you that you don't even know. God shows up and he gives you favor in an interview after you've been trying month after month, year after year. God shows up and he gets you approval when you know your credit's not worthy. God shows up and he brings you out. And the only way, if you're honest, you can get out of that situation is from God. And David says, praise him for his mighty acts. God isn't just something that we read about. God is an acting God. He's a moving God. He is doing stuff. There's some devils that you don't even know you have because God has dispatched angels to fight on your behalf. There's some stuff that God is actively doing in your life that you are not even aware. Nothing happens by accident. It only happens, and this is what he's speaking to, by the providence of God. By the providence of God, meaning that nothing happens without God's permission or without God's instruction. Nothing happens, which means that whatever you're going through, God's got his hand in it. And, then, and, and if God got his hand in it, God will keep you through it. And God will show himself up in those wonderful, mighty acts and his excellent greatness. It, it, this excellence of greatness, this idea that God, whatever... Awesome you think you've experienced, God's awesomeness surpasses that awesome. Whatever goodness that you've experienced, David said, there's no goodness 
like the goodness of God. And he's saying that when you reflect on what your true experience with God is, not the experience through the lens of critics, not your experience with God through the lens of culture, not through your experience of God through the lens of your past experiences, because if you're not careful, you will let other people, you will let culture, you will even let your own experience determine how you see God. But David said, just let God stand on his own. And when you look at what he's been in your life, he's worthy to, he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be, to be praised. So secondly, the reason, the points of praise is because of his mighty acts and his excellence. In greatness. Let me give you the third one. Then he says that there's a proper means of praise. There, there's, there's a way, there's, there's a way to express, express your praise. It's in verse number three and four and, and five. He says, praise them with the sound of a trumpet. Praise them with the psaltery of, an, of a harp. Praise them with the timbrel and brass and, da and, and dance. Praise them with the string instruments and organs. Praise them upon the loud cymbals. Praise them upon the high sounding sounding symbols, David gives his version. I want to be sure that I'm clear with that, that David gives his version or gives his, his recipe for, for praising, praising God. He, he, he says that, that there's all of these instruments, and I don't want to go necessarily too much into detail about what some of these instruments represent. I kind of want to generalize it for you so that you can pick up the principle of what David is saying, because I know some people are asking and saying, I, I, don't, I don't see any any symbols? I don't. I don't see any any brass. I don't, I don't see any of those organs. I, I don't see any of those instruments. So how could I praise God without those instruments? No, no, nobody's asking that. I mean, I, okay, no, okay, all right. How 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 can I do that? Well, what David is saying essentially is that that he wants to praise God with everything that he has access to. He's saying that, that, that my attitude and my disposition to praising God, watch this, is not based on how anybody else has done it. It's not founded on culture. It's not founded on tradition. He's saying that I am not, I'm, I am not um, withholding anything from God. Everything that I have at my disposal, everything that I have access to, everything that I can get my hands on, everything that my resources will buy, I'm going to use it to give God some praise. Now, I know some of y'all, because of our faith tradition, are stuck on the actual instruments. So that's not what we're here to deal with in this moment. But principally, what David is saying that I want you to focus on is that I'm going to use everything that I have at my disposal. Everything. So I'm going to give all of the instruments that I have access to. In, in the New Testament, Paul uh, uh, uses uh, our bodies as a metaphor for those same instruments. And so could it be that David is suggesting to us that it's not that you have to have a symbol, a, a symbol that you got to have uh, an organ, that you got to have in heart. Maybe he's saying that whatever you have, use it. Use the instrument of your voice. Use the instruments of your hands. Use the instruments of your entire being to give God some praise, to give God some glory. He says that's what praise is really all about. It is not you being reserved and only giving God what you think he deserves. No, it is being an, an unreserved. Lord have mercy. If anybody could, could instruct us on how to praise God, and I was debating whether or not I should include this because I didn't want to make the sermon too long, but, but it, would, it, would be, it would be David. There, 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 was a, there was a time in David's rule that the Ark of the Covenant had been taken from Israel, from Jerusalem. And, and, and what the Ark of the Covenant meant was represented was the very presence of God. And as long as they had the Ark of the Covenant or the presence of God, they had the blessings of God on them and on what they did. Lord have mercy. On them and what they did. It was on them and when they went to war, 
as long as they had the presence of God, they experienced victory. Lord have mercy. That is, Lord have, boy, that is so good. Because, because God isn't just interested in you. God wants blessings to flow into what you do. And why that's so important. Because the enemy couldn't see the God in them because they didn't have the spiritual lens to see it. And so God had to find a way to communicate himself to those who can't see him in the normal way, in the spiritual way. And so God would show himself mighty to their enemies by giving his people such unanimous victory in what they did. So that on the other side, the enemy would say, what kind of God would let them do that? Right? Right? So, so the presence of God didn't just keep them peaceful and joyful and prayed up. It also gave them favor in what they did. This, this is why having a real prayer life makes a difference. Th th this is why meditating on God's word makes a difference. Th th this is why getting connected with people who see God and have faith in God on your level makes a difference, right? Because we want God to be, we want to be in God's presence so that he can not just bless us, but bless what we do. But a time came when they didn't have the ark and they couldn't do nothing right. <laughs> Every time they would go into battle, they would lose, and not just lose a little bit, Terrence, they would lose bad. And David knew the only reason this is going on is because we're trying to do life. We're trying to go to war without the presence of God. Okay? And so David set out on a mission to get this Ark of the Covenant back. And, and, and when he recovered it, when he recovered this ark, the presence of God, the first thing he did was start dancing. Lord have mercy. He started celebrating and giving God glory. And I'm not talking about no PG dancing. David was dancing unreservedly. You know, when we, we praise God, we'll stand up and we'll clap with the, to the two-step on a two and a four. Some of y'all be on, the, on a one and a three. But, you know, we, you know, we... You know, if we re get real good, we get a little smooth with it. You know, you know, we get, you know. But, but, but David, that's a little reserved, though. Because when we used to go to yesterday's, amen, y'all don't know about yesterday's. Yesterday's was that little club that Brittany used to go to when she was in. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I, it, it was probably closed down by the time she came up. But everybody got their version of yesterday. You know, the little club that we used to go to before Jesus, amen. You know, and we was in there unreserved. We was... I'm about to tell my age, backing it all the way up. There wasn't no wallflowers, wasn't no brothers holding up the wall or nothing. No, we was, when the right song came on, we threw out all dignity, we threw out all decency, we just unreservedly, especially if the sister, we just threw it all out and just freely expressed ourselves. No shame, not worried about what anybody going to say. It was freely, unreservedly expression. When David got the covenant or the presence of God back, he worshiped and praised God freely and unreservedly. And he didn't put a time frame on it. In fact, from the time he recovered the Ark of the Covenant to the time he got back to the, to the temple, Every seven steps, they would stop and give God some glory. Lord have mercy. This is, I don't know about you, but it was way more than a mile. But I don't know about you, but it takes me about 15 minutes to walk a mile without stopping. I, I didn't say run. Y'all quit laughing. I said walk. I'm walking. I'm walk, uh, just to gingerly walk. It might take me 15 minutes. It probably, okay, y'all, okay, all right. But if you could imagine how long it would take you to walk a mile if after step one, two, three, four, five, six, 
7, you stop and have a praise party. When you get done, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you stop and you have a praise party. Then when you get done, one, two, three, four, how long would it take you to go one mile? Imagine going tens of miles and every seven steps he would stop and celebrate the presence of God in their life. Lord have mercy. It wasn't a 15, 20 minute sermon and I'm good for the week. It was every, it was every seven. He did not want to go eight paces without praising God because the presence of God meant that much to him. He knew the benefits of having God's presence in my life. Time is of non-issue. Whatever it takes to keep the presence of God. And I'm going to tell you how unreserved he was. How unreserved he was, the closer he got to the temple, his wife could see him from the balcony of the room. And she looked down and was ashamed because David had, had taken all of his clothes off and said, you are so undignified, you're supposed to be the king. The king don't dance like that. The king is more reserved. The king got to keep his clothes on. And David said, the devil is a lie. I am unreserved in the presence of God because he means that much. See, family, it's not about does it take all of that. It's about what are we willing to let go of so that we can authentically, unreservedly worship and praise God. Because a reserved worship is a worship that is withholding something from God. And sometimes we wonder why we don't feel the presence of God. Maybe it's not because God is holding back. Maybe it's because we're the ones that's holding back. So David knew something about giving all of himself. And that's what I want you to take. We'll get to the instrument stuff at another time. Don't worry about that as much as the principle to be lifted is David said, I'm not reserving or withholding anything from me giving God glory. In every area, in every aspect of my life, I'm going to give God some praise. And let me give you the last one. He gives us who the participants of his praise. It's right here in the text. Verse number six, and I'm done. And he says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And then for redundancy, praise ye the Lord. Family, I used to think that David was just talking about human beings. But what I learned was, is that there are more than just human beings who have breath. And David didn't just limit this to humans, but he is including everything that has a breath. You try to figure out why is that so important and what does that have to do that can't be right. Well, let me give it to you this way. When God even created the animals, he created the animals for a specific purpose with specific design to do something specific. He created a dog to walk around and bark. He created deer, I don't know what they do in particular, but walk around and eat grass and corn if you leave it out. Um, he, he created fish to swim. He created sharks to swim and to attack. He created lions to roam and to be the king of the jungle. What are you saying, Brother Moss? All of the animals by nature, are functioning in, their, in the design that they were created in. They are fulfilling the purpose that God created and designed them for. They are being who God designed them to be. And in being and doing what God has designed and called you to do, that is a way that you praise the Lord. And so the, the difference 
between us and the animals, they are designed to praise God by just being the animals. And so as long as they're walking in their animal nature, fulfilling their animal design duties as an animal, no matter the animal, David would suggest that they are giving God praise because they are functioning in the design and in the creation that God created them to function in. Well, family, Paul would teach us in Ephesians chapter 1 over seven different times, says that we were created, we were predestined, we were designed, we were foreordained for his praise and for his glory. And so when we are living a life that bring God glory, when we open up our mouths to praise God, we are walking in who God created us to be. So David says that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. But I'd like to think that I'm a little higher than a shark. I I'd like to think that I'm a little higher than a dog, than a deer, or any other animal. And I just refuse to let an animal outpraise God more than me. And so no matter where I am or what I'm going through, I I gotta, if I got breath in my veins, I ought to be praising God. Doesn't matter how bad the day has gotten started. By 10 o'clock, Philip is going to be all right. We can give God some praise. No matter how what challenges my children are going through, David said God worked it all out, even the things that didn't work out the way that I wanted them to work out. I know in the end God will work all things according to, for good according to those who love God and who are called according to his purpose so I can give God some praise. As long as there's warm blood running through my veins, as long as there's breath in my lungs, I can praise the Lord. I, I, I can praise the Lord. In fact, David's saying it's not a question if you can. It's really a question, will you do it? This is a, this, this is a command, praise. He, he, he makes a statement, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Then he says, in case you missed it, praise the Lord. I know you got some other stuff you're working on right now, but just pause right now and give God some glory. I know it's close to the end of the, but go ahead and give God some glory. I know there's some stress is going on in your life, but just give God some praise. I know that there's some money that's a little bit funny right now, but just give God some praise. I know the marriage is a little bit shaky right now, but give God some praise. I know the kids are acting up right now, but give God some praise. I know you just hit the lotto number, but go ahead and give God some praise. You just got the promotion. Don't forget to give God some praise. You just bought the new house and the new car, but don't forget to give God some praise. Whether it's good or whether it's bad, David says, give God praise some praise because our praise reflects how we see God did you hear what I it reflects how we see God it reflects our heart towards God it reflects our belief and our faith in the God that we serve when in spite of what we're going through we can give God some praise and there's power in that praise because David knows that after coming out of exile, there's going to be some putting my life back together time. There's going to be some, I got to work some stuff out time. There's going to be some, it's going to be a while till things get back to normal time. And David said, what's going to get you through that? It's giving God's praise. If you believe that, give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Thank you so much. I pray something was said to bless you, to encourage you. And, you know, Every Sunday, every time we come together, every day, but in particularly every time we come together, there's an opportunity. Because the, the benefits that come along with giving God's praise is really for the people of God. It's one of the reasons why we have to be true to the text. And part of being true to the text is not just, just saying that David is talking to everybody. But the people David is talking to are the children of God. Which means the promises and the blessings that he's sharing with us come to those who are God's children. So every day really is an opportunity, if you're not already, to become a child of God. Aren't you tired of going through life without the presence of God in your life? Going through these cycles year after year, month after month, struggle after struggle. Some of you might have something that you're struggling with right now. And you've tried doctors, you, you've tried counseling, you've tried money, you've tried substances, you've tried everything. 
At some point, you got to give God a try. You got to give God a try. You do that by, by receiving him as your Lord and Savior. Being willing to be obedient even to the point of baptism. The Bible teaches us that when we're baptized as a result of our obedience, we rise up out of that water a new creature. We are a child of God. We're a part of the family of God. Paul says, I believe it's in Galatians, that he says, I recognize you as children of God by faith. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So here's the beauty of that. Literally, old school preacher would say, put it on. When Paul says, put it on, he says, the old school preacher would say, I have this coat on. I put this coat on. And the beauty of that is when I have, I got this shirt on, this black shirt, I got this black shirt on. And the beauty of that, you don't know what shirt I have on underneath this. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't know the, the armpit stains. You, you, don't, you don't know the holes because I done washed it too many times. You don't, you don't know the red juice that I spilled on it three months ago that I just can't seem to get out of. All you know is Brother Moss look fly in that black shirt. I ain't get no amens right up in there. Okay. But all you know is the black shirt looks like it's supposed to look. But you don't know what's underneath this. And, you, and guess what? You can't judge me by what's underneath this. You can't treat me by what's underneath this. My future is not determined by what's underneath this. All of that is a result by what I have on. And when we put Christ on in baptism, the world can't judge us because God no longer does, not based on our past mistakes. But we get judged based on what God sees. And when God sees us, he sees what we're covered in. And we're covered in Jesus Christ. The power that we need, the blessings that we are running after. Paul says all spiritual blessings are in Christ Jesus. So I want to invite you to get into Christ Jesus on the body of Christ, become part of the family of God so that you can have everything that God wants you to have, be everything that God wants you to be, go everywhere that God wants you to go, and ultimately open your eyes in the presence of God, and he say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter ye into the joys of the Lord. So we want to invite you to come. If you need prayer, if you need encouragement, if you want to re rededicate your life, please come as together we stand. Jesus, I surrender all to Him. I freely give. I will ever love and trust. Miss Watts is here, and she has a, a grandson with her, and she wanted to come because she believes in the power of prayer. Amen. The Bible teaches us that the effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much, and uh, we as a church believe that God still answers prayers, and uh, and so she's requesting prayer for her and her grandson. And 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 her mother. And what's your what? Miss Betty, I got to stand away from that thing, Miss Betty. And so uh, we want to we want to pray for her right now and pray for them right now before we, we move on. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we're so grateful and thankful for your presence today. Uh, we're, we're thankful because we know that you still have the power to heal. Uh, we know that you still have the power to restore. We know that you still have the power to, to bless. And so we're coming right now on behalf of, of our dear sister here and her grandson. 
and all of the different challenges and, and vicissitudes that they're going through, God, we're, we're asking for a special blessing uh, to be d- directed and delivered directly to their home and to move in and throughout that entire home and to shore up anything that's, that's out of place, to fix anything that's broken, to straighten anything that's crooked, to restore anything that's out of place, to heal them physically, heal them emotionally, and to put a hedge of protection around them so that the enemy just can't get close. So God, we're believing by faith that not just that you have the power, but that you will do it. We're believing by faith that your acts are great, and that we're about to see them take place in this, in, this, in this home. And so we're just thankful for their courage to come and their belief in prayer. And help us as a church, God, to continue to wrap our arms around them and their entire family. To serve them so that they can see the, the God in you. So that they can see, receive the hope and receive the love and the care that they need. Be with them, Lord. Watch over and care for them. And we ask it all in your son's name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much again for your time this morning. Prayerfully, something was said to bless you and to encourage. And if you're watching online and you have a prayer request, please be sure to, to send those in a DM or in a, uh, a text. All of the information should be in the uh, description. But we just thank you again for joining us online today. Listen, it is Labor Day weekend. Amen. And uh, unfortunately, uh, there may be some upset uh, Aggies who decided to watch online today, amen, because they upset, but it's all good. The Lord going to bless you anyhow. And so uh, uh, I had to come to church, and I was upset that my pirates lost, but it's all good. But no, no, but it's going to be a great weekend. Just be I want to encourage you to be safe, have some fun, and um, uh, thank you so much for being here. And people who are traveling, uh, we're praying for traveling grace for you as well. Um, thank you again, Brother Brian, man, you and your family for, for, for your presence this morning. Appreciate you so much, and for our guests this morning. Uh, so good to see you as well as as online. Uh, but go ahead, let's let us stay in. Don't forget at the end of October, um, if you go to that next slide, Brittany, with the uh, the youth has a uh, college visit coming up on the 28th of October, and uh, and so uh, please see brother and sister Philip. Looks like by tomorrow. Amen. If you're planning on going, I think he may extend it. I think to next Sunday. Okay, all right, to next Sunday. But we're excited. Uh, for our youth on, on that. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we're grateful again for this opportunity to worship you and, and to praise you and give you glory. Uh, God, we, we just pray uh, that, that our worship was pleasing and acceptable in your sight, and that you were honored by our worship today, and, and that you, you know without a shadow of a doubt that, that you have our heart. And uh, as we prepare to leave this place, Lord, help us to always, always practice you in our presence. Keep us safe as we depart and as we enjoy these next couple of days on vacation. Uh, Just keep us safe, Lord, as we return home safely. Uh, Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us, both henceforth now and forevermore. And we all say together, amen.